Let's start with a prayer then. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing us to come together and talk about Holy Communion, the great gift of your sacrament. Help us to understand with our minds and love you with our hearts. We may serve each other and earth and be forever. We entrust this time and this conversation to you in the hands of our blessed mother as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sins, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Um, so before we start on Article 35, I just want to make sure there's no questions or comments on uh, uh, some other stuff before that. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's not Article uh, 34. We yeah. just touched it briefly on ensuring reverence and all the things. Later on, I've been thinking, um, I've noticed in some other churches that sometimes there's a like, profound bow of reverence towards the uh, altar. With the back to the tabernacle. And I realize that that's a sacrificial table. But I'm not sure when we should do that and then have your back to the tabernacle. Um, so, yeah. so, this comes from the general instruction of the Roman Missal. And so the instruction is a article letter. That's why it's kind of applied works, basically, or uh, laws. So the general instruction, or the germ, is often called, <laughs> um, is goes to that. One thing that says in there is, is that in the mass there is meant to be a vow. The problem is, is the general instruction assumes a couple. And because the general instruction is written for the entire church, many places in Europe, many places, especially in Rome, which is, kind of, you know, which is where the, um, the model of the Eucharist is supposed to be, the Eucharist is not preserved in the main chapel. And the reason why it's not is because of the tourists. Right? So, you all, so think about like Patrick's in, in, in New York. They literally put the Eucharist off in uh, another room for the sake of of respecting and preserving and keeping the Eucharist. Like side chapel. Side chapel. Yeah. 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 But we're saying Peter's is not going to be on on side chapel. The, the main altar is on another chapel. And the reason for that is that they close it off and people walk by and then you know, it's, it's a way to preserve and protect the Eucharist. And so because of that, the general instruction assumes or remains the cathedral that the bishop celebrating with a company about a bunch of his priests and deacons. That's the presumption. And so then you have to kind of take that presumption and apply it on your head. Um, one of the presumptions is that no one enters into the sanctuary in their mass. Um, so one presumption is that no one enters into the sanctuary during mass. Um, so the reader, the presumption is the reader is going to be a priest um, or a deacon. Uh, because the bishop's mass, you think he's going to have a bunch of deacons, a bunch of priests, you know, a bunch of servers. So the presumption is. Everyone's in the sanctuary space. Presumption is the Eucharist is in a side chat. Presumption is, you know, if you, but if it isn't, then you have to figure out how to apply it differently. Who gets to decide that? How does that interpret it? I'll play the bishop. So the bishop is the chief liturgist for the diocese. And so talking to our bishop, our bishop has said, yeah, go to, can you reflect when you're in the, uh, your pass on the tabernacle and any flat entering the evening. Even though the instructions is not to, because it assumes a different context. Um, and that's why you have these weird things don't really make sense. Because one of these things you see too, they can, this is something that's very common, but actually it's also against the general instruction. Is you'll see in the middle of that, this is how I mean, we know it applies to places that aren't the Eucharist. It says in there, when you pass, um, so I'm going to think the exact word. 
Very often, they'll see when someone walks across you know, from the priest's chair to read. They'll stop and go bow in front of the altar. Guess what? That's not in general structure either. Yeah, that's not yeah. But that's not in general structure either. So either there's three interpretations, or two interpretations. So either you genuflect, you pass by the Eucharist, you don't do anything at all. To bow, to bow is not part of the structure. To bow is interpretation. That's become very common. That's not mentioned at all. And so either do nothing whatsoever, it makes no sense, or you identify it. To bow is not mentioned in the instruction. So if you read the instruction, it does not say bow and pass in front of the altar. It doesn't say anything whatsoever. And, and so that leads you to two, two options. Either do nothing or do anything. And talking to our bishop, he says, well, don't like that. That makes a lot more sense. Be because you've got to do something. Yes. The bowing doesn't make any sense. It's become the common interpretation of the verb. But it goes back to that general instruction is meant to be applied to the cathedrals of the Eucharist and other places. Is it still proper to show reverence to an empty tabernacle if they know it's empty? There's well, nothing in there. So the tradition is, is, that, is, is that what we do is that the genuine flood of the Eucharist is there, but, but when the Eucharist is observed elsewhere, such as on the Thursday or Friday, you bow to the altar. And that, that's where, again, you have this thing. Yeah. So the old tradition is you bow to the altar as a piece of sacrifice. Is that tradition with the little tea or big tea? Little tea. Little tea. That was 1916. That one actually goes back very far. Um, that when the Eucharist is not present, you do bow. And that's why there's this mix up, this confusion, because the general instruction presumes it's not there. And the common interpretation, again, it, it also forward is what's actually said. Um, so there's two options. To read the instruction carefully, the options. one is nothing, obviously we're doing fun. To the bow is, a, it, 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 it says specifically only bow at these points. So people bow, it's not done there at all. But it's become a common interpretation. So, What's that? When we walk, we're not supposed to. Um, you, you're never walking across the across the Eucharist over the mass. Not during mass. Not during mass. Okay. So you, when you go across, you pass by. So there's three. So the tradition is, you jay the Eucharist uh, when you pass by the tabernacle. For entering or leaving the sanctuary, uh, for entering or leaving the church. Those are the other times traditionally you would genuflect. After cleaning up and back and forth, you probably genuflect once and then, but otherwise you're stopping like for seconds. But it's the like hours. It's so small. Big cathedral is probably get probably away with it. In our church, you know, for the sake of just getting things done, you'll probably just have to genuflect once and then. More than understand. But the tradition is three times. No, no. So now, if you can't be able because you have bad knees or a bad back, the bow is a good substitution. Or we can kneel, we just can't get back up. We'll come down to 50 people kneeling a while, but what about the congregation this is? I went to start here last Sunday. That's embarrassing. Getting back up would not be pretty. I think that's what the board was saying with that, yeah. I don't know if they had to pick me up. If you ever if you ever look at the uh, interesting, if you ever look at a bishop with two deacons knows knows what they're doing, where we'll um, you'll see that the deacons actually grab the elbow the wings, and so we'll, two deacons on both sides, and while on the elbow the kneels, they're actually holding them up. Because generally, there's only the older priests. Deacons would be younger. That's actually, and you also notice that the tradition is notice my hand on the altar, this tradition. I do it now when I'm young, and then all will have a support. I have a question. I was taught that the priest is the one who's going to be the when the procession and the recession, when the cross goes by, you're supposed to bow. But I'm the only one that does that. <laughs> Are, it, it is a tradition. Yeah. 
Oh, okay. Because um, that's what I was taught. So. One of the difficulties we have right now is that there has been upheaval and a forgetfulness of the uh, And so people are, are taught the tradition anymore, people know the traditions are, why they're there. I just want to make sure I wasn't doing no, it wrong. No. <laughs> that, that is a tradition. Oh, okay. Generally, generally with the blood, they go back to the cathedral. The bishop would pass by and bless them. That's something I'm going to do and take them because I'm not a bishop. Mm -hmm. But if I were the bishop, I would be walking down the aisle blessing you as you would love. Yeah, that's what you would. Well, we had, I don't know if it mattered, but we had one senior and he was our priest, so when he came by, we always had. I mean, it was still tradition everywhere. I mean, oh, okay. a senior or a priest. But, but it goes back to the bishop, because the bishop would go down blessing everybody who passed by. Okay. Um, that was one of the traditions in the mass, because he would walk down the aisle to bless some people. Uh, for, for which part, sorry? No, uh, for both parts. Uh, she just mentioned that the cross pass is fine, and then she comes to the altar, but the Eucharist is the present. So when you come to the altar, the Eucharist is not present. The altar should be at the foundation. When it comes to the priests walking by, and that is just a loop, that's, there used to be three different kinds of vows. That's part of the problem. <laughs> oh, I know about that. Um, so there used to be three vows, where there was a vow of the head, there was a half vow, and a full one. So this would have been the half vow to make it make good sound um, But head vow, vow of the head, probably one. I have another question. <laughs> Now, I know when I've been in the church and maybe some others come out to mass, and you go and open up the tabernacle to retrieve the customary quotes for your kids before you go and do your visits, you ask that we be there. Yeah. And I noticed in my son's uh, church in Gilbert that, or one of the churches that I've been to, um, whenever they opened up the tabernacle by like after the community to put the post back, all the altar servers and the priests and the deacons. Uh, Jimmy. Yeah. Okay. Now, <clears throat> during the night of Mass, we're already kneeling during the night of God. The most horrible, we're standing. Although, you turn around and you open up the tabernacle, I find myself, I'd rather kneel, and a few other people do. Does that just cause confusion, or is it okay? So Cardinal Lorenzi was asked that when he was the head of the, the, pre the prefect of the Divine Mercy for Dalton of the Bay. He was asked, was asked this question about how uniform for people be. His answer was, people do what they want, basically. Um, so when it comes to the people's part, there, there is a general request of general uniformity and suggestions. But there's no obligation to it at any point. Um, and this is kind of Lorenzi's idea, I don't have it on my head, but I can pull it for you if you want me to give it to you, you'll see it. Um, this, this is Carl Lorenzi's answer. So basically, there's flexibility. There's not meant to be, no one to be out there, you know, the old ladies for not in this or in this or going. Not a big deal. It's a big deal for the priest because I have a particular role, and what I do changes the mass. Your, your role is different. And your role is, is to give your heart and your love uh, and to unite yourself to your own um, And so basically, there's different ways you can do that. Um, now, the general suggested way is following the particular rubrics, the particular times, the particular words. But you're sick, you've got a crying baby in your ear, um, you're, you're deaf and can't hear, you know, you, you, you're, you're a country that don't speak language. Maybe other ways to do that. Maybe praying in Rosa would be better. Imagine the upon the sacrifice of the cross, or um, yeah, um, or certain personalities. It's sometimes easier to not look at the word, pay attention to the words, but pay attention to the meaning. Because the goal of the mass isn't to say these words; it's to adore God and honor Him to ourselves as well as our sacrifice. That's the, that's the point. And so people are different. Now I can't do that because if I do that, I change the mass. Stops being Christ wise, becomes my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you can. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I've heard is that even churches are rather modern that we 
have keys. Up until relatively recently, it was standing all the time. Okay. Um, there was the Middle Ages too. But no, um, cues. No, there was no cues. There was no cues. There was no cues. Right. It was the dealers. Church I belonged to in Vegas. We didn't have any dealers. Dealers are modern. Yeah. 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 That's that's that was, I mean, that was when we got to the point where we were standing so much of the time. But other churches in Vegas, when I would, you know, get to a daily mass or something, I would usually go to place and they have kneeling, so I have kneeling yeah. during that time. Yeah, no, the, the, the kneelers are, are, are modern. Yeah. I mean, the two, the thing that my understanding is the pews go back to the 16th, 17th century, the other is back to the 19th century. So, being, is the standing more like the Orthodox because they stand a lot? Uh, no, there still would have been the kneeling, it just would have been the support. I didn't see kneelers in there. Well, the, 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 the Orthodox do not uh, kneel very much. They stay in the whole lot for hours. <laughs> yeah. So they're not kneeling the same way. No. So they will kneel for daily mass, but not for Sunday mass. And, and they put a lot more emphasis on vespers. Like. Well, that used to be everywhere. So, so okay. if, if, if you were to go. <laughs> 100 years ago, or 60 years ago. You had to go to Vespers before Mass, and then it's me, right? It was never, it was never required. It was, oh, it, 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 it was commonly done. Okay. Uh, and often it's all the same day. You go to Mass in the morning, you go home at lunch, come back for Vespers, or even song was called in uh, England. Um, but it was very, very common. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it was Russian Orthodox. So okay. Uh, but in the East, what I've seen in the East is that normally theirs is the day before. Yeah, there's Saturday night vespers yeah. and then they go to Sunday morning mass. Right. But in the West, it was intended to be morning mass and then vespers in the evening or something. Oh. Are you interested? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Do what? It's like 20 after. Um, we're still being educated. Yes. Yeah, I missed two classes. I gotta catch up. <laughs> Any other questions? Or we can, go over? Um, can I answer the next one? Mentioned um, of the standing, uh, and then the other part of it. Okay, Article 35. Holy communion with God and Mass. When we look at the Latin roots of the word communion, we see that it means in union with or one with. This is why Holy communion is such an appropriate title for the sacrament of the Eucharist. Unites us, and Christ makes us one with Him in His Church, both in heaven and on earth. I'd also say that Holy Souls in Purgatory as well. Right, so one of the Church in heaven on earth, meaning who in heaven? The saints, the angels, and of course, yeah, God. <laughs> and those are as well. Those are purgatory. In other words, we receive the body of the host, or therefore in that mystical body of church. Be care of St. Paul who said, Become a blessed mission of bless, participation of Mother Cross. And this is pointed out here that participation is the time this communion. The benefits we break are the participation or communion in the body of the cross. Because there is one bread, we are many of one body. We all partake of the one bread. Question for you. How is there one run? How is there one run? So then Paul says, because of the take of the one bread, we're all one body. How is there one bread? We have many hosts. I say as far as super um, like on um, physics, it's super shaped. It's all one. <laughs> it's all one reality. <laughs> I don't think Paul had a different thing in mind. I think we're all right. I see it as it's the same bread that Christ had at the Last Supper. It's the same bread. Right, right. Yeah. And the time he kept his body. So the whole transfiguration, so. Correct. Yeah. He introduced. Yeah, exactly. 
In other words, it's not, it's not a numerical number of just one loaf of bread. Sometimes you'll see this where people think it means one loaf of bread. As we just want the physical numerical loaf of bread. <laughs> That's not what we're talking We're talking about the same reality. And the fact is, it's not the same loaf of bread, even week to week. <laughs> right? it's, it's different loaves, it's different hosts, it's different things, but same reality, which only happens in a supernatural era. In other words, it's just cross. It's not just a symbol, it's not just it's something beyond ordinary phrase. So it's even in that one phrase there, um, which often isn't used well, it says more than just loaf bread. Article 36. This all takes place by the power of the Holy Spirit, who makes Christ present in the Blessed Sacrament and unifies us as his church. Whenever we receive Holy Communion, therefore, it's unity and strength, we are more holy and deeply united to us. Additionally, it's the Eucharist, the memorial of Christ's passion and death, to the communion as a completed weapon after that. Binding us as charity. The divine charity of Christ on the cross has the ultimate source of union, created the reception of Holy Communion. Because Christ is present, receiving our Lord, we rephrase that, because the Eucharist is Jesus, was a present in the Eucharist, the Eucharist is Jesus, that's all it's here. Then you receive the communion unites us to Jesus in the holy with a deeper way. Each communion oops. Each communion, there we go, unites us more to Jesus. And, and then we unite as well to his redemptive act. Redemptive chair, because it is the same sacrifice, the cross. Now, what this is saying, now, presuming, of course, we have rejected this by saying or casting aside, this saying then is every time we receive communion, our union with God is deep. So receiving communion today, assuming that I don't lose that union by sin, tomorrow I have a communion, is it going to be the same union or going to be a deeper union? Deeper union. And the day after that, we have that communion, deeper union or less union? Deeper union. To the grace. To Yeah, so there's obviously practice to do with that later. If there's assuming, of course, we do a practice. And after we get to it haphazardly or thoughtlessly or simply. Um, every communion done well, every worthy communion, you might say, um, deepens our, our union with the cross. And not just here on earth, but also in heaven. Every worthy communion is closer to God here on earth, and therefore in heaven as well. Because the reality here on earth is preparation for the union and reality of heaven. The whole reason why there's union here on earth is to bring us to union with heaven. Every worthy communion, because we're literally joined to Christ, to Christ with us, talk to Christ, and Christ inside of us, make us closer to our Lord and bring us then to a higher place of heaven. So every time you go to communion, you are going closer to God, so you're doing it more than the right way. Isn't that a beautiful and honest thought to God? That we have this chance to be closer to God every day. It's terrible. So, question. Yes. Person what is the state of the union at that time? Is it where he was before he didn't even know the same or did he lose all that deep in the union? Yeah. So there is a principle called revivisance. Mm -hmm. 
12 step eight, sorry, ladder, ladder two, ladder two, ladder four. Sorry, ladder four, 12 step eight, four. There we go. <laughs> that is, is where the, the, the law is supposed to place today. We have to go to the next once a year, being once a year. That's a minimum. Uh, it's because people weren't doing it all. Uh, because it was work. Because people would say, well, you know, I slept with my girlfriend, I don't have to go repent of that. So I'm not going to communicate. Turn to another, miss the point, I'm trying to say. At the very least, you're once a year. Communion once a year, confession, at the very least. But you still have to go to Mass every week. Yeah. yeah. Mass, mass always uh, But people were avoiding this great gift. Um, and then in, in the laugh for that again, they had the things like the Jansenists who would say that uh, in order to receive communion, you had to be perfect. Communion was for the perfect. And so then there was the spirit of receiving communion, even by people who, who were doing their best. And that's when Margaret Mary, the, the sacred part of the motion appeared and, and was emphasized, so the Lord's desire. So our Lord desires to receive communion every day. He wants to receive worthily. You see, if unworthily, you actually make some worse off. If I go to receive communion on your friend, I'm standing in the back. That's a worse insult if I admit I'm wearing his head. I'm doing it intimately, pretending I'm your friend. That's for worse. That's why my dad, um, he didn't church for so long. Because so many people were pretending like they were good. <laughs> but a lot of things like how they would put the, the bad priests in small towns and stuff, like, and they would do things to people. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> yeah, no. He likes criminals because he's like, at least they're acting like they're criminals instead of acting like they're good. <laughs> well, hopefully, you both act with an That's what I'm telling you. Like, I don't think it's good, it's evil under me. <laughs> well, that helps. <laughs> Um, but, and because of, so, we for you and me in heaven. And also then, part of this is to remember, because it's the same sacrifice as Calvary, we're being joined ourselves to this Christ divine, Christ divine love. And this lets us then take part in the reality of the Holy Sacrifice. Be because the Eucharist is Jesus, if you and I can then join into this holy sacrifice, and our hearts, our lives, our souls can more closely join to that as well. So we become more closely united to our Lord and His act of love for us in Calvary. That's that to you. And that's why, as all of those we talked about before last time, we said that it gives us strength, in order to defeat us. Wipes away any of sin. It, it gives us the voice of temptation. It's because of this. That's why it does all those, that's why he's an earth us, because it literally is our Lord, who is God himself. Body, blood, soul. Good. This is the letter that they did in Greece to God, the Church of the Eucharist. Pope St. John Paul II states that St. John Christ's commentary on the words, which is quoted, uh, this cup of blessing is, is a participation of the body of Christ. Profound said, What is the bread? Is the body of Christ. What are those receiving the cup? The body of Christ. Not many wise or love. 
Prayers of bread, simply one, we had many grains of wheat. And this is what we'll see in the nonetheless present. That's why the difference is not apparent, say, and made a perfect whole. So which are mutually drawn to one another and they go together and die in front. The argument is more compelling. I mean, with Christ, the gift of grace for each of us makes it possible for us and Him to share the unity of this of the body and this of the church. The Eucharist reinforces this incorporation of Christ to place in baptism the gift of the Holy Spirit. So we have communion then not just with Christ, but with the church. Each other. It's because of Christ. Because of Christ, we can have a union with each other. And it begins in baptism. And again, it's fostered, strengthened, and everyone will um, Interesting, you see this even on a human level. I remember when I was in the center, minor center, I would call it center. It was fascinating to see how it's even on a perfectly human level, attitudes and, and even phrases were passed along to the body. We were a small group of guys, about well, 40 of us, kind of a year to the 30s or 50. What's fascinating is that I observed when I was a freshman things the seniors were saying about good and bad, bad, things about the teachers, things about the class, things about seminary in general. I would hear it repeated when I was a senior by the college freshman. So they, the, the, the young man never met the seniors when I was there. The, 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 the athletes can pass along down the ranks or influencing the freshman. It was just fascinating, right? And that's just on a human level, our attitudes, how we look at things, the three things, the way we address each other, the way we talk about our Lord. I mean, if you go to church and you're sitting there and you're talking loud, that's even for the one that's so deep, right? You're in there, you're, you're being rabbit, you're praying, and you're focused on the Lord to influence other people. And that's just on a human level. We say we believe in the community of saints. We're saying there's a reality that there's a real union with each other. We say that includes the sharing of spiritual goods. Where is that phrase from? Community of saints. Um, sharing spiritual goods. Um, the final ten is the final of church fathers, final of Aquinas. Um, but so but the things that do. And it goes back to the scripture where Christ says, there is nothing secret about being made known, and there's nothing hidden that will not be known. This is also Matthew 25. Um, this is also Matthew 25. Could be wrong, it's Matthew. Um, but there is this real union with each other, so that there's even, there's even a shared spirit. But this is why we pray for each other. This is why we see each other. This, this is why, on an even deeper level, we do that. Um, how there's no such thing really as a private advice, and no such thing really as a private virtue. Um, the things we do matter. And it begins with you, and it happens in, in the in baptism. It's perfected and completed in Holy Communion, other ways as well. But this is the communion of saints, where there is a union with each other across. That we live life together, and walk together, help each other, support each other. Um, which is the perfection of completion was supposed to happen in the bed of Eve in the garden. Question for you guys. Is it really warm in here that my mic is big enough? Am I just wearing an extra lips? Warm. I'm going to turn on that here real quick. So, a slight pause while I go turn the air conditioning off. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm always warm because I'm wearing extra layers, but I when I start to sweat, I know. So I see a mind starting. 
Well, the sun's going to rise and wind's going to rise here on the Number 38. Because the Eucharist is a sign and a cause of healing, we must actually seek to live such a way in their everyday lives. This means we do all we can to foster and promote being with God, especially raise the this in prayer. Preparation, you might say, for communion. This also means he does not work against the community in any way. We therefore must strive for anything that is less than Christ, for example, consuming media materials that the Lord faith Christ, and the church teachings. Avoid the tax of faith, morals. We probably say it's part of this, but. Furthermore, it means avoid sin at all costs, especially moral sins, especially in this union. These are training people to make it a way to create a mass. If we do so, we would be able to pervade the body of our Lord and we have to bring that upon ourselves. When we prepare for Holy Communion, there are certain things we have to do to receive word. A lot of that I mentioned the two that are missing though. Um, so, but this is, is a good beginning list. So first of all, to prepare for communion worthily, I would say both of these involve what the Thomas Aquinas called their own preparation. In other words, during the week before Sunday Mass or Earlier before they went in that. If your life is at odds with Jesus, receiving me is not going to be only good. The way you live has to be in with our Lord for the human to actually be what you do. This was that point that your father was making. You know? If I say publicly, I'm, I'm, I'm the Lord's friend, but I'm not the Lord's friend, I'm his enemy. That actually is the worst insult to go receive. But just as if I went around with the food, if I was hurting you very deeply, or I was telling everybody with great friends in order to have close with her, that would all be a worse thing than if I than to just simply admit that we had a behavior. But if I thought about it kind of when from the public saying right with the French guard, stabbed in the back and then by them, that would be a terrible insult. So the preparation begins with are we living a life of being God? Are we believing the truth being taught? Or we imitating him at all, so we follow him. That's where it begins. It is the vows of baptism of the way we live. So you have to make the preparation, which is avoid sin, especially moral sin. Moral sin being a deliberate, serious sin um, that breaks the of Christ. You have a deliberate meaning sins. Uh, for deliberately telling lies, deliberately doing other things. That's not, it's not going to destroy our relationship with Christ, it's going to make it harder to see him. We come from the church, we have to then pray, prepare for him. There's one more missing that actually is a mention here, it should have been mentioned here. Fasting. What was that? Fasting. Fasting. Actually, there's two more. How <laughs> <laughs> long do you fast? An hour for what? I would work here. I remember when it was midnight. Sometimes we're eating on a like dinner. That's why, that's why that's why six a.m. mass was always full. It's yeah, because you passed it from midnight. Everybody yeah. was there, right? Also one reason we didn't want to receive it, it was hard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, lunch came from 
And it changed from Dick 54, I think, about three hours. Yeah. And I think it was 67, 68, it went to one hour. How's this What's happening? If I were king of the world, I would say three hours a minute I sell it. So this one hour before after you see the key? Yes. One hour before mass? No, you know. This is plus a panel of mass, you have hour before four minutes. It doesn't hurt to me. That's not just to say. You're welcome to do it by, by minute. I mean, that, that's great. I'm going to do that next Sunday. Just don't fail. As long as I don't fail, unless you're okay. Especially when it comes to like Holy Thursday Mass. Uh, that would be hard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. 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 Y
for profitable soul that day during Thanksgiving afternoon. Because in a union where the closer we're going to be to God in our is literally inside our hearts. That's the time to speak to God, talk to God, tell our hearts that they thank Him, adore Him, to praise Him, you know, we're sorry, I too. <clears throat> St. Jose Maria Scriba said, Surely nothing so important to God said, We're going to award thanks for 10 minutes. Other people paid for love. Um, St. Mary Magdalene de Pazzi is the minutes we follow all the union of the precious minutes we have in our lives. Brother Gary Little Lagrange, who taught about Paul II, uh, he sees as this. There's a number of souls who told us the sorrow they feel in certain places. Where almost the entire church leave, leave, but that's the body of faith of the church in after the Mass. This cousin is going to be God. In communion, we receive a gift far superior to the miraculous cure of physical disease. We receive the offer of salvation and an increase of rest. It's so the seed of glory and eternal life again. We receive an increase of charity, the highest of virtues, which gives us life and all the virtues to the principle of man. <clears throat> Christ gave thanks to his Father for all the benefits, especially for that of the incarnation. Of all his soul, he revealed the things of his father, for them revealed his miserable wants. On the cross, he thanked the love ring his his bench. The sacrifice of the mass, in which Christ the present priest, and all his thank. Thanksgiving is one of the four ends of, of, of sacrifice, always joined to adoration, petition, and reparation. Even after the end of the world, when the last mass is said, there will be no proper sacrifice. There was no more supplication or adoration. Thanksgiving and adoration were the Lord forever to the song of eternity. The moments we have with our Lord after we receive Him are so precious and important. As a matter of fact, one of the commandments given to the priest, this, this is the law for me, not for you. It's, it's recommended for you, but a law for you. I am commanded by church law to do a thanksgiving after Mass. I was commanded by church law to time in prayer to write Mass. Now, it's not the law for you, but it'd be a great mistake not to do those things. A great mistake not to come to Mass and pray your heart or soul. Right? Because human, human nature being what it is, if we're not preparing, getting ready for what we're doing, we come to Mass after leaving, you know, Ironing or writing or working hard, what's going to happen when we get that? We're thinking about what we're doing. We'll be distracted. We'll be, we'll be paying attention to what we have to do. If you make us a little space and bubble, make it safe. And after communion, because our Lord is still with us, we spend a few minutes for our Lord at, at the, the church, thanking God, praising, recognizing what we've received. We'll find that not only do we have a deeper communion with our Lord, our standing better is there, but those prayers can be answered in a particular way. Because we're close to the Lord of that moment. Right? The Lord answers the prayer that is close to in a deeper way than those who are sinners. And the closer you're going to be to our Lord in this life is after communion. Don't waste that, that, that chance, those gifts, opportunities to spend time with Him and thanking Him and wreck Him from your heart. That's where you're going to do roll and grace. And some of the saints even say that, that time of thanksgiving and praise and adoration after communion. Will make up for the, our, our lack of um, sorrow for our sins, because there the charity and the love we have for God will overcome the other things. And so the stuff we should have done, reparation and sorrow, is made up for in love and adoration and thanksgiving. So this is an incredible gift. We can spend time holding God. How, I think most of us, we see the stories of Anthony or the lady, the magical of the Christ child of our arms. Wouldn't that be wonderful to do that? Yes. You can't. The communion you're doing just that. You're holding for the Christ in your heart and your arms. You can hold him and be with him in the door of another. If you walk away without recognizing that, it's like our lady gave you Jesus and you walk away with the door. Okay. 
from another planet. What's an option? And we have our Lord with us. And so take this chance, recognize the gift. And not everybody can spend a lot of time after Mass. Life, life is life. But spend a couple minutes, and a few minutes, five, ten minutes. Give them what you can. Um, make, come out of that place, that space in your life, in your heart. You say, This is my time with my Lord, where I can be close to Him, He's close to me, because we're meeting with each other. Don't lose that. Question, please. I've never seen it here, but in other parishes that I've been to, especially large ones, people will go up for communion and they won't stay for the end of Mass. As soon as they take communion, they go out for the Do they really? Go? Did they complete mass? I mean, I was technically like, yes. I always thought that practically was no. Well, see, what it is, it is so technically yes. So, so the, the the heart of mass, what's what's the minimum requirement um, is? There's a little bit of debate where it begins, but basically, the gospel, the priest communion. Okay. To attend that, you've been there mass. But to miss anything else without a really really serious reason. They just want to get out of the parking lot first. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a it's a reverend. I thought it was disrespect. It's disrespect, but also the confusion between the sacrifice and sacrament. And because often people think you are to buy some people, and that's it. And they go, they stand themselves, well, why come early? This guy can go there and receive this this day. Or what that it is. Now why is the afterwards? But God goes, me, I'm done, I'm ready for this. They forget what they adore God at first. And that's for something we give to God, adore Him. This is, this is why it's part of the preparation of heaven. That's what we in heaven. Um, and so, yes, we all supersede. But remember, this thing happened every week. This event was once a year. But, but I think there's a confusion in many people's hearts. You don't ask people why they go to Mass. Most people say, oh, they, they look at you. Uh -huh. I mean, it's just basically still on the table. Just walk it out because yep. you're not. Yeah. 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 And so it's a great confusion about who's there, it's a confusion about what we're doing there, a confusion about why mass matters. Um, is always people's faults? No. Sometimes, unfortunately, they talk about it. Um, is, it is it disrespectful and irreverent and bad? Yes. Okay. Um, but I've never seen that happen. I mean, everybody is so reverent in, in church here. I mean, they're quiet, they're adoring, and in so many, so many churches that are like, hi, how you doing? Are you going to go out there, you know, and talking during mass and stuff, visiting? And I've never seen that here. We were doing much, much better. Yeah. That's how it was in Flagstaff. Like, you'd go in and sit down and, like, you'd kneel. And once you were done, like that, it felt like you were waiting for the movie to start. People were talking, and just, it was like, yeah, it was like, you realize what you're actually like, you know, the graphics are different than what's going on. They're in a church, you know, and we had theater. Do you have time to explain what's for the end of what's for the end of Sure. What's that? You you externalize what you believe in. So it's the law of prayer. Is the law of hope. So on a human level, if you go to somebody, you're kind to them, you're gentle with them. And speak to them nicely, that's going to sink into your heart. You speak to them about, you know, after, if, if you speak to your, your spouse and everything, and you speak to them, say, oh, that they are ugly, they are, how stupid they are, that's going to soak into your heart. The way we pray, the way we treat God, the way we act, is going to affect our belief, so our faith. It's going to be affected, at least two things go hand in hand. The way you believe will affect the way you pray, the way you pray will affect the way you believe. The way you adore God, your postures, your gestures, your reverence, that will affect the way you believe. And so if you, if you go to Mass, and the culture of the church, whether you know, we weren't taught or whether they were completely malformed or whatever, it's, it's, it's about, I, it isn't about choosing anyone. 
But the culture of the church is you talk, you chatter, you ignore our war, you leave right away afterwards. After a while, the people that aren't going to live it. Because the way you pray, the way you practice, the way you believe. If, if, if you uh, go to the church and the priest is the tossing around the Eucharist and he's nothing's in the hair, he's not really purified, what's being taught? You, you can say everything you want, you can have a different homily in the world, but if your practice is saying this isn't important, you're going to believe it's not important. And so these two things go hand in hand. What, the, way, the reason why the gestures and the, the reference and the are important, these two things go hand in hand. The way you practice your faith, the way he speaks and preaches the way that you can be all words. I see it's unfortunate one of the ways you see it here. Unfortunately, in CCD, some of the parents won't take the kids to Mass. So with CCDs, when the Lord of Christ is present, the Lord of the death of the Mass, but the parents never go. So what do they really learn? That Mass is not work. Right? Um, if you tell, if you tell people in CCD or in, in the homily that you know, divorce is bad and marriage is bad forever and have to be lived for life, but they're not saying that their parents, their uncle, aunts, and relatives, they're going to learn it doesn't matter. The way we act, if that's what they believe, they believe that's what we act. What is the trans English translation for that? The law of belief is the law of prayer. Law of belief? Oh, belief. Belief. Like the credit, I, I believe. Credibility is a version of it. Credibility, I think, is the drum. Isn't that the third question? And what's uh, the second one? Uh, is a rendering? Of prayer. Yeah. The law of belief is the law of prayer. The way you pray, the way you act, affects the way, the way you believe in vice versa. Okay. And all the boys are a big influence on that, too. I was helping research uh, a class for college servers, and I forget the name of the uh, famous poet, but he was torn between becoming Catholic or Lutheran, so he went to the different masses, and the Catholic altar servers were reverent, just, he said, look like they believe, and not so for the Lutheran altar servers, so he went and became Catholic. And then there's another famous person, a scientist who did the reverse because the Catholic altar servers were moving around and this and that. They don't they want to be a Catholic. And so that's less than anything. Oh, just a random comment. You're the first priest I've ever seen that when you're preparing everything, you just use like this minimal amount of fingers. No, you keep your fingers tight. All the priests are like this minimal amount of fingers. Well, it, it is a tradition. Um, so, if you go back to tradition, you know, even the way the fingers are off with these fingers, the only people that touch our Lord, it was so serious that as the show lost, these fingers are off not quite And it's that's what Richard saw very mass about these fingers. Because tradition was only only these two fingers touched, the Eucharist. Um, because it's a whole world of life. And that piece of bread. You know, it's, it's everything is right. Everything is new. Everything is delivered. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. That, that was the, that, that, that's the old. That's, that, that used to be the law until 19. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mass here so it makes me feel like, like when I first got introduced to the Catholic Church, it was in California, believe it or not. <laughs> and um, I was a Catholic, but I went a, when, um, for the midnight mass, I was walking by a Catholic church and I just went in. And it was the most amazing mass. And I went every Sunday, uh, every Christmas, I would go to midnight mass, even though I was a Catholic. Mm -hmm. And then this is the first church that I have been to since that I felt that same thing during Mass. It was just, it was amazing. But, I mean, people would walk by this little tiny church in Seal Beach. I mean, it was a tiny little Catholic church. And there would just be people all around would just, like, come in. You could just hear it and you were drawn. And this is the first 
parasite that you sits in the uh, How's that seem to you? Thank you. Yeah, that's because if uh, you have the reverence and the problems, all the yeah. rumors, it's edifying. Right. Which is an additional blessing and grace that you receive. You actually feel the Lord's presence and spirit. Thank you, and I'm sorry at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, wasn't, it wasn't bad at the other churches, it just wasn't the same. It wasn't as intense and so, but you have that when you walk in. Uh huh. Yeah. Especially in, in the Mass, it's just, even the Novus Ordo, I mean, it, it's different. The Lord is good. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> Said it, but somebody said, 
He does not have the church for his for father to have God for a father. If you're not, if you don't love God, walk with God, and with God, then how can you be united with him? Not, not true. The real union is supposed to happen in eternal life in heaven. That's what we want for each other, even our enemies. And so we forgive, we love, this begins a mass. Come to mass for hating people. Come to Mass, you want to go to hell, come to Mass, you're rejecting somebody. You go to the Lord's Lord, help them, forgive them, and love them in your heart of hearts. You're going to pray to them here at the Mass. And, and, and die to yourself, Lord Christ, offering for their salvation. Cool. Very hard. Very important. Yeah, in Proverbs 25 22. If your enemies are hungry, give them food to eat. If they are thirsty, give them water to drink. You will heap burning coals of shame on their heads, and the Lord will reward you. I used to teach my kids that. I asked them, how was school today? And somebody was uh, you know, treating them badly. They prayed for them, and they tell me, oh, burning coals. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I praying for them and being nice to them. Because I know they'll, they'll convert them, and they'll change them into a friend. Yes. Or at the, very, at the very least, the Lord will look, will look at you and say, Look what you did, but love for me. You know, you did your best to obey the respond. Yeah, that's a hard one. Yeah. It's a hard one. Let's stop there. You can find how it's going to, that's okay. There's a good discussion. Um, can I on this then before we go on? We're at today. What? What was this? Why don't you talk for the day? I survived. It's a I hear the father. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be handy to go do that. I heard the story of the church in the Nazareth. I'm in the door, and I'm sitting in the home, and so I'm going to So the first sign of the prayer says, the only person who left the question was who was Judas. Yeah. I was going to make a comment. I wish I might laugh. For sure. Um, our daughter goes to the uh, ordinary church as chair of St. Peter. And um, in the bulletin, they even mentioned that all Catholics are invited to participate in our divine worship liturgy. We see it to be by kneeling the table and at the altar bill and receiving our Lord on the tongue. They have to be But it makes me wonder it's a beautiful mass. It's, it's like a Latin mass, only it's in English, right. which you all know. Is, was that the intention of the Second Vatican? Awesome. Pretty much. Yeah, that's what I thought. So you can actually look at what was signed and approved by the Fathers of the Vatican Council. It would have looked, it would actually would have been more Latin. It would have looked at the Latin Mass, the exception of reading from the Vatican. Some, some of the readings would have been in the English language. Uh, so the readings and the readings would have been in the English, the canon, the prayers. The, 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 the folks of God was to remain in the land. That was what was the intention of the mm-hmm. But yes, the was very much an ordinary, except the canon would have been the Bible. Okay. Let's close with a prayer and uh, you're invited to Mass of the if you're ready to proceed. <laughs> Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the great gift of Holy Communion. Help us to understand more clearly what we've been offered to us. Help us to always receive worthy. The union we enjoy here on earth may lost the eternal life in heaven. And all that we say and do we fear for you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. All right, so Father, to the beginning. It's not our shall be. We're all about it. Amen. Lord, you're with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.